Hi everybody, I hope that the noise in the background is not too distracting. So I'm here today, uh, this is Courtney, to talk to you about being a frugal minimalist and five reasons that I choose to be a frugal minimalist. And let's just get right into it. And the first one is to say, being a frugal minimalist allows me to think of my future self. When, and that is so important because pre-planning is so important for your future self. The chances are most of us, though we can't know our future, right? Most of us are going to have our formative years where we're growing up, we're going to school, then we have our working years and our family years where if we choose to have a family, um, to raise children, to work, to have a career, maybe to buy a house, and then we're going to retire. So most of us follow that path. 70 to 90% of us pretty much follow that path. Um, there are always things that can happen, but predictably most people will go there. So you can kind of plan that you're going to need retirement. So being frugal and being minimal allows you to think about your future self. And I would highly recommend you look at your parents or people you know that are older and where they are and think about or ask them how they got to where they were and what they would do different. That is something I have done. I have read, listened to podcasts, asked people, what have you done? What would you do different? And I have followed that advice thinking, chances are good I'm going to get to 60 or 70 or 80 and I don't want to have those struggles. So if someone's done something, if I repeat those steps, the chances of me being in a better shape are very likely. So being frugal and being minimal allows me to think of future Courtney. The second one is it allows me to help others. Now I will say I have to have some boundaries about this because as we have become um, more financially comfortable. There are situations where I have found that I have to find the balance between, I'm a very giving person, the balance between enabling and helping. And so that's a very fine line sometimes, especially with certain family members and we have six children. But we kind of have a rule that like, while it enables us if, for instance, we see, and I'm not a big believer in talking about all your good deeds, but if, if we see a need, we're able to fill it, um, we're able to give, and being frugal and minimal up frees up some money to be able to give back. And I very much believe whether that's tithing or just seeing someone who is hungry or seeing you know someone at Christmas that you can bless them with maybe bicycles for their children or buy groceries for someone, or maybe it's just in your own household or family, um, being able to help where you can help. And we kind of have a rule that we'll, we'll try as hard as we can not to let anyone in our family go hungry or be homeless to, you know, to the degree that they're trying to help themselves as well. Um, and we'll just take a break here and ask you to please subscribe and like if you like this uh, material. The next one is it allows me to spend money where I value it. And I keep just thinking about my mattress. So I don't think I ever had a new mattress until I was 51. And I know that sounds really weird and really gross, but um, over the years, what has happened was like my family would have a guest bedroom and they would move and they wouldn't need the mattress. Or I would have a friend that had a guest bedroom and they would move and wouldn't need the mattress. So I would get like these gently used mattresses and I would buy toppers for them from people that I knew had nice clean households. And they might not be anything extravagant, but I would get those mattresses and use those. Um, we finally got to the point, you know, where my grandmother had passed away after purchasing a brand new mattress for the guest room. It had only been slept on once, so we had inherited that. It had been about 12 years, and we decided we're going to buy a new mattress because my husband was having a lot of shoulder pain. And we went down to the local, um, there's actually a mattress manufacturer down the road from where I live, and we were able to, we compared mattresses all the way from $400 up to $5,000 or more. And we were able to pick a $1,300 mattress that had been excellent. And we supported a local family business. But I, having $1,300 to spend cash on a mattress was something that I couldn't do 10 years ago even. It would have been hard for me, but because I saved my money and I had saved up, I had the money to go buy that. Same thing with my car. Um, I had a friend who had a really nice Honda Accord. Her mother, it was her mother's car. Her mother went into memory care. And I said, if you ever saw this car, let me know. And I 
kind of kept saving knowing that eventually she was going to sell it because she had to sell it for her estate. Um, and long story short, she called me and when she decided to sell it, I had the money to buy it. So because I'm minimal in how much I have, I don't, I don't spend a lot of excess money. It allows me to save that money that when something comes up that I value, I have the money to buy it. So that is number three, is it allows me to spend money where I find value. Number four is it has allowed me to retire early. Um, at the age of 30, so I started reading investment and frugality books in my late teens and 20s, and I became ill in my 20s with this autoimmune illness that I have. And when I became 30, I said to myself, I want to retire at 55. I don't know what that looks like, but I know if I put money in my 401k, if I put money in my, well, actually I was 29, if I put money in, um, if I'm debt free and I make my needs few and my expenses few, I'll be on the right track. I don't exactly know how it's going to work. So I did that. So for the next 11 years, my ex-husband and I put into our 401k and when we divorced, we split that up so that there was around $90,000 each. So over the course, when we never made a whole lot of money, but we just consistently put money in there and it compounded. I think we put 7% of our income in there. So it wasn't as much as I would have done now knowing what I know. But what happened was, so we had that investment. And then as I was a single mom for about nine years at that time, I put money in as I could. Eventually I was able to max out my IRA for um, around 6,000 and eventually 7,000 when I hit 50. So also I became debt free by the time I was 45, completely debt free by the time I was, I wanna say I was 47, when I was completely debt free, no car payment, anything. At 51, my husband and I paid off our house. We had amassed um, at least a year's emergency fund and after our house was paid off, it just so happened that our business had a really good year and those are kind of novelties, but we were able to put back, um, well, right now, our it's hard to say because our income varies, but my husband's W-2 job and my 1099 job that amount is what I would consider what we need to live on. And we were able to save about, oh my gosh, five or six years worth of income. And my husband's eligible for social security right now, but he's not gonna take it till he's full retirement age. I don't even include our, um, our income from our business because while I include it in what we make, we are able to save all of it because we have made it where we can live on his W-2 income and my income. And now our bills are so few because we do, we paid off our house in four years. We have no debts that we are able to save at about a 70% savings rate. So when I got sick at 52, well, I was actually 49. I've been sick for two years. My doctor asked if I could take a sabbatical. And when I really looked at the numbers and crunched the numbers, it took me a while to come around to it, but I realized because I've been frugal and minimal, I don't have a lot to take care of. We have used cars, a modest home. Um, I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of expenses. And because we've been super frugal, we are, a, I was able to leave my job and just work with my husband part time. Um, and I can work when I feel like working. So like for instance, I need to do a little bit of work, but it doesn't, it just needs to get done in the next five days. And it'll take me about three or four hours. It's not like something that I have to do today. Tomorrow, the Airbnb, I need to open it up for guests, but the cleaning lady came yesterday and she helped me with that. So I won't have to do, but maybe an hour's worth of work for that. So I was able to retire early because I thought about my future self. And when the time came around, we were in the position that we were able to let me retire. The next one is, I, I this one is like, when I met my husband, I was 40, he was 53. We were both single parents. He was broke, broke. I mean, he didn't have any savings or anything. I had my 401k, but my yearly income was only $15,000 a year and I had debt. And um, I was going through my divorce. It was a long drawn out. I was legally separated. My divorce took almost 20 months. But um, I met my now husband. I didn't marry him until seven years later. 
And one thing that I remember my mom, you know, was kind of hesitant about him because he was just this country boy. And I said, mom, and I had been having some other guys try to date me that were very wealthy. And I said, mom, the thing about Jim is like, he can hunt, he can grow food, he can grow a garden, he can fish. He knows how to fix things. Like I would rather have a man with skills <laughs> than a man that if he lost all of his fortune, he wouldn't know what to do. And in the same vein, like I have a lot of skills. I know how to cook for cheap. I know how to source clothing for cheap. I am really good at finding um, work, finding a home. I'm really good at finding my needs and getting my needs met or my family's needs met for very little money. I know how to survive on very little money. When my kids were little, for a long time, we only had about $25 a week for groceries. And for a while, we were on Women, Infants, and Children's. It's a supplement subsidy program. And I was able to feed our whole family um, between those WIC vouchers that were worth about $190 a month, I think, in today's value. Um, and on $25 a week, I was able to stretch the beans and cheese and all that that came on, that came with that. And so I just learned to be really resourceful. I learned to source all of our clothes from the Goodwill, from charity shops and things like that. I don't have to do that now, um, but now I just don't buy a lot. I don't, I don't need to buy a lot because it's just me and my husband and I am super skilled. My parents, my grandparents raised me and but my, my parents were around and one thing about my parents is like my dad and my stepmother they always had a garden they had an old car they had a modest house and there was a point where they were even on food stamps for a while but they always kept their car clean their house clean their yard mowed um they always grew a garden they had a freezer full of meat that they hunt my dad hunted and fished um and they were always really good with managing what they had my mom, while you know that's a different scenario, she was always good at like painting furniture, painting walls, decorating with what she had. Um, my grandparents, they had a modest house in a modest neighborhood. They had always had cars. They paid cash. They kept the cars for 10 to 15 years. They took care of them. We didn't upgrade a lot. We had the same microwave, washer, dryer, all of our appliances. My whole life, but they had the same. They lived till I was 23. They had the same everything. So I learned that like you don't have to constantly upgrade. It's not necessary. So even today, I'm filming this on an iPhone 11. It's the most expensive phone I've ever had. I don't even know what iPhone is out now, but I paid $400 for this one, new from Walmart. Um, I generally will buy an older edition of a new phone that I pay cash for. I never do payment plans. I never take out consumer credit. Like I have skills. And being a frugal minimalist allows you to learn to be super resourceful when you're living in line with your values. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe and share if you found value in this. Have a wonderful day. Bye.